ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Viewer Submissions. My name is Diablo, and today we'll have a look at the oil setup of Jesse. Jesse is a viewer who asked me to have a quick look at his uh, oil setup uh, and, you know, give my thoughts on it. Um, so I will, if you want me to have a look at anything you've designed and give my thoughts on it, let me know and I might do this more often. All right, let's get started, shall we? Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the aesthetics of the design. If you want to build anything your way, that is fine by me. I'm not going to judge the way it looks. I'm going to look at efficiency. I am going to look at um, 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 throughput, all that kind of stuff. Of course, if you specifically ask me, how you know, what do you think about this design I've made and the way it looks, I'm going to comment on that. In this case, Jesse didn't ask me that. Um, so I'm assuming he's more interested in, you know, the efficiency of the design and the um, um, the way the design works. Now, I've made two infinite patches, oil patches here. Um, I've also connected the water inputs or the necessary water inputs. These two were not necessary um, to a little lake that I, you know, chose because i had it lying around anyway um and there we go as you can see power is just turned off now it's just turned on so that is quite an integral part of this design um so let's start by having a look at it um in map view as you can see it's quite long indeed um it has i believe 160 somewhat um oil refineries somewhere in the neighborhood of 160 oil refineries um let me check that number real quick just to make sure i'm not lying now the power's turned off <laughs> and that's part of the design trust me i'll explain that in a moment ah here we go uh that's part of definitely part of the design but the entire thing has uh, sorry, 136, not 160, 136 refineries in this row. Um, so as you can see, it's quite long. Again, I don't, if that's the way you design factories, if the rest of your design is, designs are all this lengthy, then why not, right? Um, who am I to judge? Now, we've got this long row of um, oil refineries, but we've also got these rows of chemical plants these chemical plants uh, as you can see now without power but that is all explained later these are all uh, light oil to petrol converters and these are one row this last row is heavy oil to light oil conversion um, the refineries are uh, surrounding three I would say somewhat standard lines of um, petrol light and heavy going up this entire row has only as far as i could tell only one set of pumps in it uh, somewhere in the middle yeah there they are um so that could cause a problem in the long run when all this stuff has filled up uh or the heavy or the um light oil because that means that these lower ones can't actually uh, put their petrol or uh, heavy or light oils into the tubes into the pipes to transport it up because they will be backed up all the way so that could be an issue um something to keep in mind now let's go up and let's go see why we lose power all the time this is actually as i said by design to keep everything balanced if we go all the way up oops there we go if we go all the way up we see we have ignore this purple power generator <laughs> um that's not part of the design that's just something i put there to make sure everything is powered now you can see that we've got a whole bunch of tanks here tanks that store light tanks that store uh, heavy and some a double row of tanks that store petrol now these 
uh, four tanks down here I presume were for water although because I did not connect those at the bottom they are empty and shall remain empty because they do not reconnect uh, at any point back into the system um, this line oops this was some of my own testing which you can ignore that is not part of the design sorry about that um of course, I had to do some testing. I had to work with the design for a while to, you know, get to grips with what does what and how does the, how does it work. So uh, the first thing you'll notice, probably, if you look at all these tanks, is everything's hooked up to wires. Everything's hooked up to either arithmetic, uh, arithmetic um, combinators or decider combinators. Now, what do they do? Well, if we look at this one here, this one is quite simple. Uh, this one's hooked up to these petrol tanks by green wire, and they um, regulate which tank gets the petrol that is being produced. So either this pump starts working or this pump starts working. Now you can see, if you look at the uh, to the right, it's blinking like mad. That's because it's turning on and off real fast, like every tick, nearly every tick. That's because it's almost completely balanced. Uh, that, in turn, means that um, these tanks will always be um, filled up, in this case emptied out, because I've got a little surprise up there. Um, equally. Now that is nice, uh, but you will find that, especially with the extra petrol coming in from the side here, um, it is somewhat biased to one side sometimes, is what I've noticed. But then again, you know, um, I haven't worked with it that long. So, that is what that is for. This just checks which one, which of these rows is lower, and um, that just tells the other pump to start pumping, to pump up the lowest row. It's it's not that complicated. These ones do quite a similar thing. Um, they either turn, as you can see just there, the light oil to petrol uh, on or off. If there is uh, a lot of storage in here, it will turn it on. If there is less storage in here, which, again, I find quite high. It's almost 100,000 uh, that it want, that Jesse's design wants to store. Uh, I think I believe it's 96 or 95. Uh, nope, no, no, I have to check this one, sorry. Uh, yeah, at 95, it actually enables. So if there's more than 95,000, um, it enables. So these tanks will have to be nearly full before we actually start converting any leftover uh, light oil into petrol. The same goes for the heavy oil, um, except, of course, it looks at the heavy oil tanks. Surprise, surprise there. Um, and that produces light oil, with it, which then gets pushed back into the light oil tanks before it gets either reused, or uh, sorry, uh, used here for um, conversion to petrol, or we can output that to the top. Uh, it's not connected to anything right now. Um, for, if you, you know, for instance, for solid fuel. Um, if you're using a lot of petrol, but you also need a lot of solid fuel, for instance, this is, a solid way to huh, get it solid solid way to do that now um, the refineries work with a little bit of a different system um, this turns on as long as all resources are below a certain point so as you can see right now because they are all inter interconnected uh, you can see all the input signals uh, light oil is at 97, uh, heavy oil is at 71, and there's virtually no petrol. Now, petrol obviously will always output, because uh, they all look at at least 96,000. Um, 
they will all output a P1 at lower than that. Uh, of course, this one balances that out because it's always balancing between the 96,000 and the 95,000 of this switch. Um, whether we, uh, where we either use that to make more petrol or we're not using it, so we're filling up, which in which case uh, we would be, you know, um, not getting enough petrol. That's basically what's going to happen. So this setup tries to balance the usage of the, the different fluids and balance out what the output does. However, I think that is, I think that's quite clever. Let's start with that. Um, it's, a, it's a simple little system, but it works quite well. However, I also think because of the length of this design, uh, it is also working against itself. Um, as I said earlier, when these lines get very long, they can clog up. And once all this is filled up, these machines are not able to output fast enough. Um, of course, that is balanced by the fact that uh, these uh, refineries are just turned off at random points. Um, well, not that random. You can actually tell exactly when that is. But you can also see that either these refineries are on or these chemical plants are on. And it, when, it get, when it really, you know, gets full, all of them turn on. Uh, but there, there's no point at which, uh, as you can see, both have now turned on. This will now turn off and this will still keep going. So we're always producing at least some petrol in this setup. Do I think that is the most efficient way of doing things? Not really, but I like the idea behind it. Um, so how do we test? Because um, if I, I'm outputting it obviously now to somewhere, but if I didn't do that, these tanks would just fill up and after you know two minutes uh, or maybe five minutes, these tanks would just be full and you know these um, refineries and chemical plants wouldn't do anything anything so how do we test what the throughput actually is on an average per minute basis well we attach um, some solid fuel production and put that and let that just disappear into a void belt uh, void belt is a mod that you can add to your factorio setup uh, it allows for the creation of a Spawn belt and a void belt. Spawn belt does what it does. It um, creates materials out of thin air, a full belt's worth, uh, fully compressed, and the void belt eats it up. Both of them are faster than a blue belt, so you will never have a problem filling a blue belt or emptying a blue belt with these two. These are quite nice. Enough of that. Okay, so I built one. And I noticed that the tanks were still filling up. So I built a second one. And the tanks were still fill filling up. So I built a whole bunch more. Until I was sure that the tanks were no longer filling up. Now I have noticed one thing. One strange thing. Um, with all these pipes connected to each other. Uh, the left side quits um, uh, quite a lot faster quite a lot sooner than the right side I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that has to do with the current fluid mechanics in 0.16 i'm not entirely sure but that's the only explanation i could give for that uh, and for some reason this last one just keeps going where this one is struggling to get stuff uh to get petrol this one just i don't know i don't know where it comes from it just bypasses all of the other um, chemical plants and just is the only one that gets to suck it up. I don't know. So as you can see, we are. This last block is not actually doing anything that much, that significant. So we are using all of the petrol that is being produced by the setup. Now, if we go to fluids and we look at how much. Um, 
this actually produces, and we look at, let's say, a minute, because that's a little bit more stable, we see that it produces about 60, let's, let's be generous and say 60,000 um, units of petrol every minute. Um, as you can see, it rises there a little, and then it dips a little down, and it, it, it all varies a little bit between, let's say, 55 and, what, 62 right now? And there it goes, it dips down a little bit. Um, so let's say, on average, it does 60,000 units per minute. That's quite good. I mean, that's, uh, it would seem, 60,000 units per minute, that that's quite a lot. When in fact, it is not. Um, if we look at the amount of oil refineries we have built for this, and uh, if we look at um, the way this was set up and the amount of chemical plants we've built for this, 60,000. And remember, we are taxing this to the max. So this is... Um, a system that, when put on full load in a full working factory, would not produce more than 60,000 per minute. Of course, that is um, notwithstanding the fact that I'm not using the light and heavy oils to do something else with. I could, of course, pump these out and um, make solid fuel out of them but we're looking at an oil setup not at uh, what can we you know what 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 um it, this is obviously my opinion um uh, but not how much stuff can we make out of our setup but more how much end product can we uh produce and the end product always i think is petrol Yes, we have a byproduct that is light and heavy oil, but still, that is a byproduct. If we were to balance this out, uh, this should stay empty and these should stay full. Now, there's, this is a choice that's been made, and that's fine. But if I look at the throughput that this thing, just by itself, just looking at petrol, can keep up, um, that's not a lot. That's about 60,000 units per minute. Now, in comparison, and I will show you that in a moment, um, with about one quarter the amount of oil refineries and a whole bunch less chemical plants, uh, my personal setup does about, let's say, three times as much production. Um, yes, that eats up all the light, and yes, that eats up all the heavy oil uh, in that same setup. So we'll not have spare to make any rocket fuel if needed. But then again, we're producing so much petrol that we could use the petrol to make the rocket or the solid fuel if needed. Okay, um, size-wise, again, I'm not going to comment on the way it looks if you want to do uh all these oil refineries in a row um why not make it a little bit wider and add some um uh, speed beacons to it if you add some speed beacons to it and you did add modules, production modules here, but you did not add speed beacons to it. And I'm wondering why that is. I mean, it doesn't take that much more room if you've got plenty of room in here already. Uh, moving it one or two to the side um, does not change that much to this design, uh, but it does make these refineries a lot more efficient. Also, that would mean if you do that, um, you could get... Uh, a lot more production out of a lot less oil refineries. But that's just my opinion. So if we have a look at, um, or rather, we already had a look at the, um, as you can see, there's a spike there of 70. Sometimes that happens when the actual oil refinery 
kicks in uh, or the oil refineries I should say kick in um, that would implicate that this row of these rows of oil refineries are capable of so much more production now we could circumvent that by adding a power pole here and just ignoring these power switches and just turning it on um, but that's not part of the design so I just want to finish up by having a look at uh, the design that I'm using currently um, and to maybe show why um, um, using uh, beacons is is a good thing I think all right uh, let's have a look okay so we are back and we are in the middle of my design as you can see now first off let's compare just the um, room that we are using the amount of space we are using you can clearly see that this is using a lot more space even if I were to chop it in half turn put it next to each other I would still I might have to do that three times actually one two yeah I'd, I'd, I would have to do that three times and I'd get I'd be a lot wider than I am with the designer that I have here but that's not Again, not really the point. Um, what I wanted to show you is I have here 40 um, oil refineries. And I have 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, chemical plants. Now those 45 chemical plants and those 40 oil refineries with... And I've checked this, the same amount of input that you have, so two um, oil, infinite oil inputs from the side and two uh, water inputs from the side. That is all that I've connected. Yes, I have, for the keen observer, I have made two more here, but as you can see, these are not connected yet. Um, and I've also connected the same seven uh, solid fuel setups. If we now look at the fluid, uh, fluid production of this system over, let's say, the last minute, you can see this produces about 130, and that's with half its oil not connected. Uh, so that's easily more than twice as much with only a quarter of the refineries. So that's something to consider during your next uh, build. They do actually help. Um, of course, if I then add those two um, oils, uh, oil lines up there to this setup, this goes to about 150, 160. Um, and that's why I said it's about three times as much as what this produces right now and this is always producing that um, as long as we are I've got infinite amount of pumps in here uh, that's because we are still at 0 0.16 and 0 0.16 fluid mechanics are shit if I can be so blunt I'm sorry um, so most of this gets sucked out all the time again I have no idea why left and right are that different um, as you can see, this one, this tank is full, this tank is empty. They've been both been running the same amount of time, and then still, it 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 just at the back here. This one's still working, and this one's not doing anything. So there's clearly something weird going on with the left and right um, of the fluid mechanics, and I don't know what that is. But that's not the point of this video. And I could obviously easily solve that by going like this and then having that suck it out there. And then this should go down really fast, yes. Um, that is probably also beneficial to this 120, I don't know. Um, in any case, 
that's uh, that's why I wanted to show you this uh, quick comparison. These these beacons do help a lot. They save you on uh, a lot of you know building and a lot of materials that you need for chemical plants and oil refineries. Um, and yes, you can say instead you are putting all that material into speed beacons. And that's kind of true, but then again, it also adds a lot of efficiency. Um, yes, because you need a lot less to get the same amount. Okay, I hope this was helpful, Jesse. Um, please let me know if you liked it or if you did not. Anyone else also, please let me know if you liked it or if, if it not, uh, or if you did not. If you want to, to, to hear something else. Um, if I should have highlighted something else, if I should have gone more into depth about ratios and all that kind of stuff or not, um, let me know what you think. And if you have a design that you want me to take a look at, either for the aesthetics or the ratios and the um, <clears throat> efficiency of it, let me know. Send it to me. I'll, get, I'll have a look at it. <clears throat> and I might do this more often. But that's enough of me. Thank you to my patrons for sponsoring this channel. Thank you very much. It helps, it motivates. And to anyone else, I will say thank everyone for watching. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel. Comment down below if you have any suggestions or ideas. My name is Still Diablo, and I will see you next time.